After a few weeks of waiting, I have now finally got my hands on all three of the official Stargrave miniatures box sets from North Star Military Figures. In my excitement, I was very tempted to just immediately crack them open and start gluing them together and making stuff, but then I realised this is actually an opportunity for some pretty interesting investigation work. There are 17 different types of troopers that you can make in Stargrave, and that's a lot of variety, and there's more promised coming forward in the expansions that are due for release soon. But with three boxes, each promising to build 20 miniatures, I wanted to see how many of these 17 soldier types we could build in a common sense way, and then get a rough idea from there of how many crews we'd be able to build out of one of each box. So today we're going to work through this absolute mountain of sprues and see how many of these guys we can get built. I'm going to be focusing mainly on trying to make sure that they're equipped properly and that they're carrying everything that the miniature should be listed as carrying or in some way representing that on the model. One quick and obvious note though before we get stuck into this, I'm personally of the opinion that captains and first mates are kind of supposed to be special and I think most people will be picking those from other miniatures that they either own or are specifically seeking out for the purpose. So I don't feel like the plastic kits are really designed to make captains and first mates and if they are, I don't think that that's really how most people are going to use them. So we're not including those in this video. And so with all that said and done, let's get stuck in, let's start building building some miniatures and having some fun. Okay, so first off I've got a recruit to build. Uh, they're armed with a pistol, light armor and a knife. So I'm gonna take uh, this body from the crew sprue that just has torso armor on it. Uh, an automatic pistol also from the crew sprue. There's an arm here holding a knife on the mercenary sprue. And then there's this head on the crew sprue that's got a very sort of clean cut, young, fresh faced look to it. And I liked that as an idea for a recruit. So we put all those together and this is what we get. This is a recruit that I built using the kit. Next up is a runner, which is very similar to a recruit, but doesn't wear light armor. So for that one, we need a pistol and a knife. I'm gonna go for one of these waistcoated bodies from the crew sprue. Uh, I like this kind of ratty, raccoony sort of head from the mercenary sprue. I feel like you know, some sort of rodenty animal would be a fast runner, so that's a, a good fit. Uh, then there's a nice sort of nine millimeter looking pistol arm from the crew sprue, a sheathed knife from the trooper sprue, a backpack from the mercenary sprue, sprue and then a hand with a closed fist from the crew sprue so quite a few components for this one but when they all come together it's a pretty cool look i really like this runner actually he's almost definitely going to make it into one of my crews so here's the here's the ratty runner or the runny ratter or i, I, I don't i shouldn't be allowed to say things Next on the list is a hacker who is armed with a pistol, a deck, light armor, and a knife. So uh, there's a body here with braces or suspenders, depending on which part of the world you're from. Uh, we've got a hand holding a data pad from the crew sprue, uh, an outstretched pistol arm from the crew sprue, and uh, this sort of head with these really cool kind of mirror shade looking things on them. So this all comes from the crew sprue actually, everything for this one. Um, and I decided that the knife could be in the leg pouch um, since both arms needed to be holding something for part of the crew. Uh, and I also just didn't want to use up all of the freestanding knives so soon. And this actually brings me to my first negative with these kits, unfortunately. There are, what, say 12 sprues here amongst the three boxes designed to make 60 miniatures. And you get something like 16 knives available. But half of those are also being held by hands. Now, when most of the hired crew that you can get can carry a knife or have a knife listed in their equipment, that doesn't really quite work out. For a start, it's not enough anyway, considering that almost everybody's gonna want one. But also, you kind of need some to be able to be modeled to legs and stuff like that so that you can keep people's hands freestanding. So I do feel like these kits need quite a few more freestanding knives. This is also made worse by the fact that the sum total of hand weapons across all 12 of these sprues is zero. There are no hand weapons included whatsoever, unless you're being very generous by including the spanner that comes on one of the sprues. 
But then, you know, that said, we also have to bear in mind that in the real world, most of us have a bits box, and those bits boxes almost definitely contain knives. It's one of the things you always end up with spares of. I know that my bits box that is just a few feet away from me is definitely full of knives, but for the purposes of this video, it was a little bit frustrating because I was trying to just use the boxes. And you might be too if you're new to Stargrave or new to miniature gaming hobbies. Anyway, enough moaning, let's go back to doing some building. Right, next up is this chiseler who is armed with a pistol, picks, light armor, and a knife. So I'm gonna go for a body with all these extra pouches on it from the mercenary sprue, a pistol hand from the mercenary sprue, an empty hand from the mercenary sprue, uh, a pouch for the character's picks to be in. I guess the lock picks would be kept in a pouch, uh, which is also from mercenaries, and then this alien head with a bionic eye. So this actually all comes from mercenaries, everything on here. Uh, this one actually went together really, really well. I really liked how it looked when it was done. So uh, here is our chiseler. And here's problem number two. No guard dog. Uh, nowhere and at all on any of the sprues. Nothing to model a guard dog with. Um, look, for competitive play, I don't think guard dogs are going to be the most popular choice. But they are quite popular amongst the casual players. I already know a few people that are including them in their lists. And so it's a bit of a wounder. Um, especially when you add to the fact that North Star don't sell one elsewhere in their Stargrave kits either. So if you're looking for a guard dog on your crew, you've actually got to find your own miniature at the moment. And that's a bit of a glaring oversight to me. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm being mean. Am I being mean? Right next on our list is a sentry who is armed with a carbine, heavy armor, and a hand weapon. Uh, so the heavy armored body I took from the trooper's sprue, uh, found uh, this cool sort of ballpup rifle uh, and a supporting arm for it again from troopers, and this shouty lady head from troopers. Um, so again, this all came from the trooper's sprue, um, but no hand weapons possible. Sad face. Next up is a trooper, uh, carbine heavy armor and knife for this one. So heavy armored body from troopers, uh, another ball pup, but this time held upright from mercenaries, a hand holding a knife from troopers and a helmeted head from mercenaries. So a bit of a mix and match this one. Um, I quite like the knife going across the body like that, the, the sort of stabby defensive position. I think that's kind of cool. It's a little bit different. Uh, yeah, I'm into this one. It's a, it's a cool trooper. Next up is the Medic. Pistol, Light Armor, and Medic Kit. And this one actually had me excited before I even started building it because I already saw the head that I was going to use for it on the outside of the box and I really liked it. Uh, so the Light Armored body comes from the Mercenary Sprue. Uh, I went with a hand carrying a case kind of thing as a med kit. Um, a revolver, I felt like, was a, an appropriate weapon for a medic. Because I figured a medic probably wouldn't have, like, a really modern, super good weapon. Um, and then this old man head with the scars across the eye, which I just thought was super cool. That kind of makes me think, you know, combat medic, like, stitched up his own scars or something. Or stitched up his own wounds or something. And, and that seemed pretty cool to me. So, uh, that was our medic. That's what he, he looks like completed. And I think he's pretty sweet. Next up is Codebreaker, so Carbine, Deck, Light Armor, Knife. This is basically a, a, a hacker with a better weapon for all intents and purposes. Uh, light Armor Body again came from Mercs, uh, AK looking gun and support arm, which I just thought was cool. I just liked the fact that there was a, a Carbine in the kit that looked like an AK. Uh, freestanding data pad that I kind of glued to him, that came from the Crew Sprue. And then a bug-eyed alien head that also came from the crew sprue. And, and again, this is one of the ones that I really, really liked. I was very happy with how this came together. Um, so that is our code breaker looking super handsome and cool. Then we have a case cracker, which again is kind of a better equipped or a, a better weapon version of a chiseler. Uh, carbine picks, light armor, knife. 
And again, lightly armored body came from Mercs. All of these lightly armored bodies end up coming from the Mercs sprue. Um, I took the spanner from the crew sprue. There was this kind of Mandalorian-ish looking helmet from the mercenary sprue that I really liked. Um, an arm carry in a metal box. I figured if this, if this guy's like a heavy case cracker, maybe he's got like some light explosives or something. So an ammo tin would be a cool thing. Um, and then a ballpup rifle from the trooper sprue. Um, you know, a couple more bits on this one, but again, it, it's a really good look, so it's worth, you know, chucking the extra couple of bits together. Commando comes next in our list. Carbine, grenades, heavy armor, hand weapon. Um, and so everything here actually came from troopers because that's where all the heavy armor is located. So it was a heavy armored body, a helmeted head, uh, a rifle, a supporting arm, and I put a grenade belt on him as well because he gets grenades. So I wanted to make sure that they were represented on the miniature. Um, and, and yeah, the, the commando looks like a commando. I mean, you know, he, he, he looks like a soldier doing battle. Uh, there's probably a million different iterations you can do for commando, to be fair. So I think mine is just representative of one of many ways you could tackle that character class. Pathfinder is next. Carbine, grenades, light armor, hand weapon. Uh, so I went for like a waistcoated body here because I figured whilst they're wearing light armor, a pathfinder is probably someone who would wear their armor under their clothing because they like don't want it to maybe reflect light or, or creak or anything like that. So I figured we could go with like a clothed body for this one. Uh, an arm with their hand held up, you know, maybe signaling to stop or that the way is clear or something like that. Uh, then a shotgun arm because I just thought like a close encounter shotgun kind of weapon would be quite cool for someone who's sneaking around a bit more. And then uh, this lizard head. I, I love how many alien heads we get. Um, the lizard head is from mercenaries. So that was uh, crew for everything. The crew sprue for everything except the lizard head. Uh, and, and what we got at the end is is really cool. The, like I say, the, the mix of alien heads really, really appeals to me in these kits. That's something that I think makes them stand out and makes them really interesting. Next up we have a sniper who is armed with a carbine, light armor, and a hand weapon. Absolutely everything on this guy actually comes from mercenaries again. Uh, there's a light armored body, a sniper rifle with a supporting arm, and I went for a helmeted alien head. And the reason I actually went for a helmeted alien head is because the head in question had these kind of quite enlarged eyes and I thought that'd be quite a cool idea for a sniper like the guy's got really good eyesight um, that would you know make sense in my head for a sniper so again those alien heads really paying off and and I really like the sniper I think that's uh, one of the the coolest models that, that I managed to put together out of this lot Then we have a grenadier, uh, heavily armored body. Uh, sorry, the grenadier is equipped with a grenade launcher, pistol, heavy armor, and knife. So yeah, heavy armored body, grenade launcher, uh, armed with a spare grenade, and helmeted head, all from troopers. Uh, you might be a little bit confused here by me saying grenade. These appear to be rocket propelled grenades to me. So they're not missiles, uh, but they're not grenades in the sense that you would think of like a, um, a drum magazine like rotator grenade launcher it's not that kind of grenade launcher it's more like an rpg um but yeah again this is a cool looking miniature uh it's kind of there's a couple of different options for the rpgs but i like this one because the offhand has the spare grenade in it which i think is pretty cool but there are actually a couple of different uh rpg like weapons that that are available amongst the spruce so you wouldn't be forced to make the grenadier just one way Then we have burner, uh, flamethrower, pistol, heavy armor, knife is the loadout. Uh, so again, the heavy armor came from troopers, uh, as a recurring theme across all of these. There was this kind of fuel tank thing on the mercenary sprue and a gas masked kind of head on the mercenary sprue. So I thought they made sense for the burner. Uh, then I took this kind of big gun. Uh, I don't really know what it's supposed to be. I mean, it looks to me like a machine gun. Um, you know, like a, an, an LMG kind of deal, but I, I don't really know. Um, but it had, you know, a big gun with a supporting arm. And I actually ended up gluing the fuel tank thing to the big gun. And I don't think that's what you're meant to do with it. I think it's meant to be like a little backpack thing. But I couldn't see any guns on the sprue that looked like flamethrowers. There were none that had, you know, like um, a cowl around the end of them or a little 
pilot light nozzle or anything like anything to really indicate that they were a flamer um, so I thought convert one of the big guns to look like a flamer probably made sense I'm not sure maybe that's just what you're supposed to do uh, and, and I kind of didn't figure that out for myself but that was how I ended up going with it because that's what sort of made sense in my head Uh, and then finally, uh, Gunner, which is uh, rapid fire, pistol, heavy armor, and knife. I say finally, there is one more actually. Um, and again, heavy armored body, helmeted head uh, with a bionic eye, heavy rifle, and a support arm. Everything came off the trooper's sprue because, uh, you know, all the big, bulky, heavy stuff comes off the trooper's sprue. This, it sounds like that's a bad thing. It sounds like you're going to end up using up that trooper sprue really quickly. But actually, you don't tend to play a ton of heavy armoured guys in your crews. Um, so, you know, there is, there's plenty to go round. And, and the extra weapon and helmet and arm options and stuff can obviously all just be used with the other sprues anyway. So, the gunner looks really cool. Uh, you know, it's just a, a dude with a big gun at the end of the day. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but he's cool. He's done. And then we move on to the last one. And the last one is the Armoured Trooper, who is supposed to be armed with a carbine and combat armour. Um, and it's a real shame that this is the last one of, of the list, uh, because I don't like to end on a downer. Um, but the plastic kits just don't cover this soldier type, as far as I'm concerned. You have things that very easily represent no armor, light armor, and heavy armor, and that all, you know, makes sense. But when you read combat armor, it has like integrated systems and it enhances the wearer's strength and stuff like that. It sounds by every single possible indication that it's more like powered armor, and therefore it's gonna need to be bigger than, or you know, or at least significantly different than the heavy armor and there's nothing on any of the sprues to represent that there there is just zero there um and i actually think that that's quite a problem that that one kind of miffed me a bit um especially because like if you are building your captain and first mate off of these sprues which again i don't think many people will be necessarily but if you are building your captain and first mate off of these sprues they're probably your most likely targets to have combat armor um in, in all truth i don't think most people hire the combat armored trooper because it's so expensive and you have to pay for its armor before each game to maintain it so i don't actually think it's a huge bummer specifically that that trooper can't be built off of the sprue um, I actually think it's more of a bummer that there's just no combat armor obviously represented on the sprue. And again, it may be that I've just missed that. It may be that I've just not understood what the developer's intentions were for that piece. Um, but it did bum me out a bit that I couldn't make an armored trooper after, you know, already not being able to make a dog and not being able to put hand weapons and anything. So I think it's just because it was at the end of the cycle. Okay, so with all the builds done, let's let's have a bit of an overview. Uh, let's let's talk about the pros and cons of the kits. I am going to begin with the cons, and that's more because I want to go out on a high because there are actually more pros I feel. But you know, let, let's just do the cons first. It makes sense. Uh, so. Obviously, the one that you know I'm going to talk about first is those emissions. With two of the 17 soldier types missing and no hand weapons on the sprue, I do think that a little bit more thought needed to be put into what was included. And that's not to take away from the fact that there's a lot included. It's more to say that if these kits are supposed to allow you to build crews, they should allow you to build crews. There shouldn't be things missing from them. Otherwise, these kits are really just here to fill out your table and there's no incentive to buy them over putting together your own crew from specific miniatures that you like. And another one that's kind of a serious point uh, is that you really do have to buy all three of these boxes. Uh, you can't really just buy one. You could probably get away with buying two. Um, but really, you want to buy all three. If I'd have been limited to just one, there would have actually been even more trooper types that I just couldn't make, um, or, you know, couldn't represent in any remotely accurate way, at least. And uh, 
like that's probably not the end of the world for seasoned wargamers who have lots of bits who are probably just using these boxes to fill out odd bits and bobs but again if stargrave was your first game if you were new to wargaming that's gonna really sting if you think that you can just buy this box kit for 20 quid and get you know a full crew out of it and then enough spare minis to make some bad guys you're gonna be let down um, and my third big con uh, is the bases the, the bases that these things come on are just um, they're 25 millimeter which means they absolutely could have been just you know the normal sort of GW style slope sided round base um, but they're not they're like a mil mil and a half thick disc um, which means you can't write the troopers name on the rim really I mean, you know if you I mean you can like you you can physically write that small it's possible but it's really annoying and it's certainly beyond some people's ability to write letters that are one millimeter at all um, it, it's just it's a silly thing to do you know a standard already loved and used and normalized base exists that's exactly the same size as the one that you've gone with so why did you go with this tiny thin base uh, I just I don't get it um, they're gonna be a pain in the ass to work with I have put all of mine as you saw in the rotate videos uh, I've put all of mine onto them and you know they, they look fine on them uh, it, it's not it's not an aesthetics thing it's a practicality thing I, I just wish they were proper bases <laughs> because it wouldn't have been any harder to include proper bases but with all of that moaning out of the way uh, we can now talk about the positives and this is actually the part that I was far more looking forward to because I am actually pretty high on these kits and I do actually think these kits are pretty good we'll talk more about that as we go through the pros uh, first of all again the obvious one is value for money 20 quid for 20 miniatures in 2021 it, that's a lot of 20s is an insanely good value for money proposition no one else really is doing good quality plastic boxes at that sort of price range or at least very few people we've highlighted a couple in my uh totally biased stargrave review video which i'll try to remember to put up here and probably will forget the next is ease of use which again is a huge pro especially for a first time gamer but i actually as you know as a seasoned war gamer uh, really appreciated all of this too the mold lines are very shallow compared to what i'm used to seeing in fact on some minis there just weren't mold lines um, they come off really really easy the plastic is just a touch softer than sort of GW plastic that you might be used to working with and the mold lines come away really really easy with a very light touch um, and the other thing that I really liked is the plastic actually responds really fast to Tamiya thin cement you know to, to plastic glues um, which meant I didn't have to stand around holding stuff for ages to get things assembled all of the sped up footage of me building miniatures today for this video um, all of it, each miniature was about one minute of assembly time. So that you know gives you an idea of just how quick and easy they are to work with. The next one is variables. Um, look, you know, there were things that you don't get on the sprues, but I think it's probably pretty much outweighed by the things that you do get. Uh, if you did what I did and bought one of each box, you'd certainly be able to build like, you know, four medics, four hackers, four case crackers, four chiselers, that kind of thing. Um, and then when you get onto the more sort of generic soldiery type stuff, uh, you know, and the, the burners and the gunners and the grenadiers and stuff like that, like, you'll be able to build four of all of those character types. Um, so you're definitely going to get at least four of each crew, uh, but... Amongst all of that, you're also going to get a ton of variation on things like heads because there's way more heads than you need. Uh, you're going to get a, at least a bit of variation on weapons because there's more weapons than you need as well. So, you know, you'll be able to have choices of different types of carbines and stuff like that. Um, so I wouldn't be willing to say that you would get 40 unique miniatures and then 20 kind of whatevers. Uh, there probably will be a couple of repeats but but you'll get four of each you, you could probably do four of each of the 15 that we've done today so you could get sort of 60 miniatures in groups of four uh which is again you know having four of every soldier type to choose from would allow you to build 
any combination of crew you'd ever want. Like there isn't four of the same thing that you're ever likely to be taking. So I think that's actually pretty decent in terms of what variety is on offer. Uh, the next one is paintability and and sculpts like this are, they literally epitomize what i'm talking about when i when i discuss paintability as a as a quality in a miniature um the sculpts are simple enough that if you want to just lay back and do some nice easy relaxed paint jobs with them that's totally possible that's totally doable and what you get will look fine but also because they're simple if you are a more skilled painter or if you just want to push yourself a bit more you have room to work to be artistic to be creative the sculpt isn't demanding that you only do one specific thing the sculpt is kind of just letting you have a fairly blank canvas to go as far as you want that's a huge positive for me personally the next one is a little bit hard to quantify but it's the feel of the miniatures if you if you want to really go into the Stargrave universe as it's presented and you don't want to modify it, you don't want to bend it to your own vision and you actually really want to get in on, on what's been given to you in the book, these miniatures obviously fit that feel perfectly. They tie in exactly to the, the atmosphere that's been created by the storytelling in the book. Um, and so, you know, if that's something that you want, this is the best way to get it because it's going to exactly provide that for you. And finally, spares. As I said, you could probably make four of every trooper type. There would still be spares left on the sprues. If you were just making specific crews, you'd probably still get three or four. Well, I, I'm, I'm almost certain you'd get three crews. You'd probably get four crews. And again, there'd still be spares on the, on the sprue, including bodies at that point. You know, four crews is 40 miniatures. Uh, so you'd still have... 20 whole spare miniatures at that point um you can do a hell of a lot and have a hell of a lot left over and so as a result you if you really wanted to could just buy one of each of these boxes and that would pretty much serve you for your entire time playing stargrave and so with the pros and cons weighed and measured the question that we have to ask ourselves now is well for me would i buy these again for you do I think you should buy them? And the answer is yes. Yes, I absolutely do. Um, chances are you're probably planning to do a bit of kit bashing, converting, outsourcing, something like that anyway. Um, so, you know, the omitted pieces, the, uh, the omitted troop types, the omitted accessories, they're probably not going to cause you a problem and so what this means is that by buying these boxes you've just got a bulk of mannequins essentially that you can add stuff to and turn into unique crews um, they're also just going to give you a bunch of spare bodies to make like pirates and bounty hunters and stuff like that so if you're diving into stargrave and you plan to take it quite seriously and play quite a lot of it these three boxes offer a pretty cost-effective way to just get a bulk of cool figures that aren't going to look like all the other stuff that you're used to playing with. You know, that are something new, that do give you that treat of playing a new game with new miniatures. Um, but, you know, they're not going to really cost you a fortune. I mean, 60 quid comparatively, you know, you'd get 20 miniatures from GW for that these days if that you know in some cases you wouldn't even get that i mean look at something like centurion devastators that are nearly 50 quid for three now for three you know so d depending on your desires i do think that it's pretty certain that these are gonna serve you well in some way or another um, how well they serve you will depend on, on what you're expecting from them if you could only buy one box if you were absolutely forced into just buying one I would say go with the Mercenaries box uh, because it has sort of a blend of different armors on the bodies that you could believably say are light or heavy armor. Um, and I think in terms of options, it's probably the one that has the broadest range of options that lets you cover the most trooper types, uh, or sorry, the most soldier types in one set. Uh, that said, for looks alone, if it was purely on aesthetics, I'd personally go with the Troopers box. I just, I think the big, heavy, bulky guys just look deadly, and, and I really dig them. And so that's my dive into the official Stargrave miniatures from North Star Military Figures. 
I do think that they're really cool boxes. I think that they're incredible value for money. I think that you do need to be aware of those emissions so that you can plan around them if you are planning to dive into these miniatures. But other than that, I definitely advise you to go out and get them because I think they're super cool. So in the meantime, folks, I'm gonna ask you to like, share, and subscribe as always. I'm going to ask you to check out the links in the description below. But other than that, I'm gonna get out of here, stop chatting in your ears, and let you get on with your day. So I wanna wish you a happy hobby and have a great time, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you for watching everyone, bye bye for now.